fasting is God's idea and God instituted fasting to grant us an avenue to entreat him, attract his attention and also be blessed of him for seeking him. I want you to know that every time you fast according to God's prescription, God in his mercy will answer you and give you a reward. The only reason people fast and fail to receive answer is when it is done contrary to God's will. And I want to show you the secret of what God really looks at when you fast so that you will fast and attract God's attention and also that your fasting and seeking God will be rewarded. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58, God instructed the prophet Isaiah to bring a word of warning and correction in relationship with fasting. The people were seeking the face of God and they were wondering why there were no answers. And in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 3, God brought a correction. He says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? That's the key word there. Afflict the soul. You see, when God initiated fasting it was his intention that we will afflict our souls and he says here that when we fast God will take notice and when he takes notice of our fast he will surely in his mercy bestow a reward but in this scenario the children of Israel were fasting and God didn't take notice. They were afflicting their soul, but not the right way. So there was no reward. Now, what does it mean to afflict the soul? If you read the book of Leviticus chapter 16, from verse 29 to 30, when God was instituting the atonement, he prescribed fasting there. That was the first time fasting was mentioned in the Bible. But it was mentioned as afflicting the soul. The word afflict is from the Hebrew word ana, and what it means is to humble yourself or submit yourself to God. That's why it says you should afflict your soul. The soul comprises of three main faculty, which includes the intellect, the will, and the emotion now when you afflict your soul you say no to your will to your intellect and to your emotion and you say yes to God and what that simply implies is that you become God centered instead of being self centered you make up your mind to turn away from what you think to what God thinks about your situation, your decision, your life, your family, your relationship with people, and the things you are doing. You want to transit from being self-centered to becoming God-centered. You want to be concerned about what God thinks, what God wills, and how He feels. Now, when you make up your mind to afflict your soul by saying no to your soul and saying yes to God, something happens. It means that you surrender to the will of God. And when you do that, God becomes pleased with you and readily releases grace to you. You see, when we humble ourselves and submit to God, we attract His grace. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, when we reject God's will, it's possible to fast and God will not take notice. There's 
a great man of God in the Bible was also a famous king who one day fell into the act of adultery and his name is King David when he fell into that heart the woman after some days whose name was Bathsheba sent a message to him informing him that she was with a child and so David tried to cover up that sinful heart by bringing the woman's husband from the battlefield home so that you know he can just come lay with the wife and everything will be covered up but the man Uriah who was very faithful to God would not yield to that clarion call to go spend the night with his wife so David eventually handed him a letter of assassination to Joab who was the captain of the army and he instructed that Uriah be put at the hottest place of the battle so that he may die and that was exactly what happened now when that happened God sent prophet Nathan with a beautiful story and God instructed that judgment be meted against the sins of David now after David received the judgment of God that the child Bathsheba conceived and gave birth to will die David fasted for seven days he fasted dry for seven days trying to um, twist God trying to turn the will of God to his favor but God did not heed even though he fasted and so after seven days of dry fast the child died now that doesn't mean God does not acknowledge our fast it simply means that we cannot untwist God with fasting fasting does not change God it only changes us so that we can align to the purpose of God and fulfill his will so as you fast I want to encourage you to take our time to seek God's will fasting should provide an avenue for you to position your soul to please God not just to abstain from food pleasure and water for a season to pray study worship and just spend time with God fasting is intended by God to help us reposition our soul to align to his will to acknowledge his will and when you do that God will become committed to your fast will release grace to you and God's grace will work wonders in your life I want to encourage you not to get discouraged about what is happening in our nation or around us seek the Lord and as you align to his will which is the critical ingredient in fasting and you submit to it then just like the scripture says if my word abide in you and you abide in me you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done and that's because our will at that point becomes God's will because we have submitted to his will and then therefore God will grant a heart cry and honor our fast let us pray Lord thank you for everyone going on this 40-day journey I pray today that your strength will be made available anoint everyone seeking you calling upon your name clothe them with fire power Lord heal the sick deliver the oppressed set the captive free supply every need change lives let there be testimonies from now on I pray Lord that yokes curses covenants of darkness be broken let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you as you wait on God may God take notice of you and may he grant you grace and favor in jesus name we have prayed amen bye bye god bless you